prolific writer and veteran journalist Mr. Ray Iku had a double dose celebration on Monday, the 6th of August 2018, as he celebrated his 70th birthday and 45th year in the journalism profession. The event, which took place on the 6th of August at the Ajip Recital Hall, Merson Center, Nikon, Lagos, featured a lecture and a colloquium tagged Nigeria, the Leadership Question. Mr. Ray Igbo has over the years built a name for himself in the field of journalism. Described as a prose craftsman, Mr. Ray Igbo's consistency and integrity in speaking and writing the truth to authorities has earned him so many accolades. Born on the 6th of August 1948 into the family of Chief Amos Igbo and Mrs. Abigail Amos Igbo in Okanafa local government area of Akwaibom State, Mr. Ray Igbo attended two primary schools in the local government area before heading to Ibibi State College, Ikorekbene, for his secondary school education. He proceeded to the University of Lagos to study mass communication, where he graduated with a second-class upper division. Mr. Igbo cut his journalism teeth at the Nigerian Chronicle, where he did his vacation job in 1977, where he became an editor. Three years later, he headed to Lagos and took the chair at the Daily Times as the editor of the Sunday Times, Africa's best-selling newspaper at that time, after which he moved to become an editor of the Business Times. Later, he became chairman of the editorial board of the Concord Group of Newspaper, where he worked with the likes of Deli Giwa and Mr. Yakubu Muhammad. The three of them, alongside Mr. Dan Agbese, co-founded the path-breaking news magazine, Newswatch, in 1984. He is happily married to Uyai Ebu, and they are blessed with three successful children. The event, which was moderated by award-winning multilingual broadcaster Prince Bissiel Attila, the chairman and CEO Biscon Communications, had in attendance Professor Bolaja Kiemi, a professor of political science, former director of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs and former Minister of External Affairs, Mr. Sam Amuka, founder Vanguard Newspaper, Mr. Dan Agbese, Executive Director, May 5 Media, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Secretary to the Government of Akwaibom State, Mr. Emmanuel Ekuwem, former Governor of Akwaibom State, Abong Victor Atta, former Governor of Ogun State, Chief Olusha Shoba, among many other important personalities. The event kicked off with the Chairman's opening remarks, Professor Bolaja Kiemi. In his remarks, he congratulated the celebrant, Mr. Ray Igbo, for the double-dose celebration, his 70th birthday anniversary and 45 years of practicing journalism. Professor Bolaja Kiemi, given his stake in leadership, said, It is the job of the media to educate and inform the public on happenings in the society. But, sadly, he said the media has failed in that aspect, as most of them have sold their consciences for personal benefits. He challenged the media to practice true journalism by verifying information and providing facts before any information is disseminated. He urged them to help the public understand the true state of the nation, guard their consciences, and perform their duty in fairness and utmost integrity. You have to be in possession of facts before you interpret the facts for us. Because if you don't, we are going to end up with a confused nation. And if we have a confused nation, we are in trouble. And so if there's one thing I'm just going to say as chairman is to appeal to the media. I can't see who else is going to have the role to do this. You, and I'm not saying this in order to please you, because if I want to please you, you know, I'm a diplomat, I know what to say if I want to please you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to help all of us 
want to understand what is going on. Don't sell your soul in the process of doing this. The guest lecturer, Dr. Chidi Amuta, a writer, public intellectual, author, and columnist who has worked with the Guardian Editorial Board, the Platform Magazine, the Daily Times, and the Post Express newspaper, was unavoidably absent. He was represented by Mr. Dan Agbese, Executive Director, May 5 Media. In the paper written by Dr. Chidi Amuta, titled Leadership and the Burden, he spoke without mincing words in the true state of the nation and suggested ideas on how the decadence in the country's political and electoral body can be curbed. Dr. Chidi Amuta, in his analysis, said the history of Nigeria was not built on a common vision. He said we had and still have the problem of ethnic disparity, which has caused us major afflictions. In his words, he said leadership can kill or save a nation. We need consistency and purposeful leadership to steer the country on the right path. He added that leadership requires tutelage and a mind ready to make sacrifices. He concluded that only decent leaders with moral stature should rule and govern the people. I want to advise, advance some observations to those who decide for us. We need, to, we need to keep fine-tuning the very legal and political environment in which we choose our leadership. A. The use of affidavits and sworn instruments to prove the age and educational qualifications of seekers of high public office should be banned by law. <laughs> Those who cannot remember when they were born or what schools they attended and certificates obtained have no business in leading anybody. B. The concept of zoning or rotation on geopolitical basis of the presidency and other key political offices by political parties should be outlawed. <clears throat> it is in conflict with the spirit of the Constitution which rejects all forms of discrimination among Nigerians. If anything, the political parties should zone the leadership to merit, which can now be found all over the country. We need to, we need to enthrone the political meritocracy now if we are to become competitive in the world. C, it is time for the National Assembly to review and amend the constitutional guarantee of immunity to high public office holders. <laughs> Equality before the law is an elementary requirement of all democracies. A polity that allows some fit persons to occupy high office cannot also guarantee them immunity from prosecution. We also, we also must quickly ensure through equality before the law. D, leadership requires tutelage. We should resurrect the defunct Center for Democratic Studies to continuously train and orientate elected public officials on the rudiments of democratic governance. The discussions later began, which was titled, Nigeria, the Leadership Question. The panel of discussions was made up of Ms. Yemi Adamolekun, Executive Director, Enough is Enough Nigeria, Mr. Debo Adeshina, former editor of The Guardian, Mr. Sam Omashe, Chairman, Editorial Board of the Nation Newspaper. It was moderated by Mr. Dan Agbese, Executive Director, May 5 Media. Ms. Yemi Adamolekun, who spoke on the essence of leadership and what Nigerians need to do in order to elect good leaders, said, Nigerians must stop complaining and act, adding that Nigerians are only good at talking. She said we need to act on deliberate trainings on the kind of leaders we want. We must begin to organize programs to train youth who will take up the mantle of leadership tomorrow. She urged Nigerians to be aware and make their votes count in the forthcoming general elections. For me, it's a challenge. It's not about what Mr. Madi said about where we are, but really about what it is, what are we willing to do about where we want to go. And I'll close with an excerpt from the Constitution, um, just as a reminder. 
The Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be a state based on the principles of democracy and social justice. It is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria, from whom government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government, and the participation of the people in their government shall be ensured in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. This is from chapter 2. And I'll go down quickly to section seven, 17 of that that says, the state social order is founded on ideals of freedom, equality, and justice. In furtherance of the social order, every citizen shall have equality of rights, obligations, and opportunities before the law. The sanctity of the human person shall be recognized, and human dignity shall be maintained and enhanced. Governmental actions shall be humane. Exploitation of human or natural resources in any form whatsoever for reasons other than the good of the community shall be prevented. The independence, impartiality, and integrity of courts of law and easy accessibility thereto shall be secured and maintained. Thank you. Mr. Debo Adeshino, in his analysis, said, The problem of leadership in Nigeria is as worrying as that of followership, adding that, Nigerians vote based on sentiments. He said we must begin to elect leaders who are innovative and purpose-driven. Leaders who are committed and ready to take actions void of ethnic or tribal sentiments. And if you are ever going to have a future, you recognize the place of the child in your life. You bring him or her up very well. He, could, he or she could be rascally, could be this, could be that. But a child is given love. I don't see too much love being given to Nigeria by all Nigerians. We treat Nigeria as a cake to be caught and shared, not as a child to be nurtured and then uh, brought up to, to, with a good future. So, the reason and the why we are where we are is because, well, maybe I'll borrow some phrase that we, maybe we don't have a soul as a country before, but more importantly, we don't even know that this Nigeria is a child to whom all of us are collective parents and which we should bring up so that we may have a future. In my place, if you are going to have a future, I will tell you there's only one thing you need to build. It's not a house. There is something you need to purchase. It's not a car. It is the best education for that child. It's love for that child. When we begin to find Nigeria as a child and give it or give her or him, whatever, whatever it is, we treat, we treat Nigeria as a male or a female child, it's a child that we must give love to. And until we do that, we won't be able to find the kind of leadership that we want. Mr. Sam Omashaya said leadership in Nigeria is tribally imposed. He said we need leaders who can sacrifice and not lead with greed and selfishness. When we have our constitution that tells us that we need to work together, we seem to be fooling ourselves. Because we have not really come to the idea that we want to build a nation that has leadership. But first, the nation has to have a soul. Democracies are worked everywhere because democracies are described as ideologies of consensus. The majority wins. And when the majority wins, you don't, you don't calculate them according to tribes and so on. You calculate them according to states, and states are not supposed to be defined by ethnic um, uh, proclivities. But since our country has become that way, people have called for restructuring, and because we cannot restructure, we cannot have leadership, and because we cannot have leadership, we have people jumping from red chamber to red chamber. We have people who do not understand anything about politics but the pocketbooks. So let us not kid ourselves. We are not there yet. We are not even close. We are not even peeping because the horizon is so clouded. We have not even started to talk about what the real meaning of leadership is. When Achebe said the problem of Nigeria is simply and squarely a problem of leadership in his book, The Trouble of Nigeria, I have a problem with that because it was oversimplified the question of leadership in Nigeria. Because we never really had a soul in Nigeria, so we keep looking for heroes. And I end with uh, the play by Galileo. When somebody said, happy is a land that needs a hero, he said, no, unhappy is a land that needs a hero. Thank you.
Secretary to the Government of Akwabam State, Mr. Emmanuel Ekumem, said leadership should be viewed in all spheres and not political offices alone. He added that Nigeria is going through a deteriorating succession of leadership, which is quite sad. He therefore challenged Nigerians as well as electoral office holders to do the needful and elect people based on merit. This country is undergoing a cumulatively deteriorating levels of mediocrity in leadership. And until we, until we fix it, until we fix it, and therefore it is top down and bottom up. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have to then do then is this. Please, Dan, please, Dr. Amuta, please those who have spoken. From this year, next year, general election, then what? sufficient amount, look at this is the media gathering mostly, some levels of due diligence, thorough due diligence on who you vote for. Because that person, when he assumes office, the totality of his upbringing and the capacity that he has will come to play while in office. Thank you. Former Governor of Akwabam State, Obon Victor Atta, also gave a stake on the issue of leadership in the country. He advocated for true elections based on merit rather than the ideology of the geopolitical zoning system. I totally disagree with those who think that there has been no leadership by example. There are, and we have several examples. And we got up and cited them. The, 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 the Malam that lied about the people that were hiding in his mosque, and several others, even in a more exposed position. I'm not afraid to say that I led by example because I did. So, and we have clusters of leaders, but what we are doing is we are listening to what um, ASG is saying. We pick, we pick. Why should anybody pick? Why do we have elections? So we have, and I listened to all the points you made. A, B, C, D, I didn't hear anything about the electoral process. So long as we do not hand over to the people the right to choose, and we are allowing these leaders, when they get the, today I read in the paper that my governor is being disgraced out of office because he was insubordinate to his predecessor, because his predecessor picked him. For goodness sake, we want elections in this country, otherwise we'll not make progress. Thank you. The event also featured goodwill messages by friends and associates of Mr. Ray Igbo, as well as people whose lives he has touched in one way or the other. Mr. Kinsley Mogalo, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, in his goodwill message, thanked Mr. Ray Igbo for his immense contributions to the success of his career, adding that he will forever be grateful for the role he played in shaping him into the man that he is today. He wished him many more wonderful years on earth and prayed for more of God's abundant blessings in him. As I congratulate you on your 70th birthday, I want to thank you for your support for me in the early days of my professional career. And while I was in Newswatch, Newswatch did so many things for me. I learned how to write. I fancied myself a journalist, even though I was originally a lawyer. Um, and of course, later on, have, have had several other incarnations. But this is a very emotional um, outing for me. And I'd just like to thank everyone. Uh, Dan Abwese, Yakubu Mohammed, my bosses, the general, Sajia Kinanade, uh, and every other person seated here. Ray, thank you very much, and congratulations at 70. Thank you for the role you played in shaping me, and to Professor, the same thing. Uh, and I just want to wish everyone well, and to wish our country well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Olusegun Oshoba, former governor of Ogun State, in his remarks, congratulated Mr. Ray Igbo as he joins the League of Septuagenarians. Speaking on Nigeria's leadership question, Chief Ulushogun Oshoba said his hope for Nigeria is unshaken. He also urged Nigerians to stop the nonchalant attitude towards elections and voting. He challenged everyone to go out and vote on days of elections and work towards taking the country to greater heights. Our governor of Akwa has spoken that our leadership in 1999. I can tell you, uh, the, the, the level of governors who are elected then through open ballot system, Herr Obasanjo, 
heavy. If you didn't hold over soldier, you would have gone AYR from 1999 to 2003. And there was no difference between AD and PDP. We AD were the uh, firebrand at Council of State, and he would support us PDP. And we never discriminated. So there have been leadership. I have hope for this country. And if all of us here, and I, I blame all of you, on the day of election, you sleep. You leave the market women, you leave the area boy to collect 5,000 naira. They collect 5,000 naira and sell their vote. If you stand at your polling booth, each of you, nobody will be able to sell votes at 5,000 and get away with it. Thank you. More goodwill messages poured in from the representative of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lagos State, Mr. Kendi Bangbeton, who represented Governor Akiumi Ambode. Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Abdallah Adamu, Dr. Udo Uduaka, Chairman, Applied Resources Consortium Limited. They all took turns to eulogize the good works of Mr. Ray Igbo, the celebrant of the day. The event also featured fragments of history in which children of Mr. Ray Igbo read snippets of articles written by their father dating back over 35 years. Next was a cake cutting exercise, after which family members, friends, associates and well-wishers took turns for a video and photo session with the celebrant. In the remarks of the celebrant, Mr. Ray Igbo, he appreciated all who came to honor him. He also read the goodwill message of President Muhammadu Buhari, which he said came as a pleasant surprise to him. Mr. Ray Igbo later expressed appreciation for the rare recognition given to him by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari. The President believed Igbo's uh, consistency and forthrightness in speaking and writing the truth to authorities deserves special commendation, especially the many times he placed his life at risk in fighting for democracy and the institutionalization of good governance in Nigeria. As Ekbo turns a uh, septuagenarian, who I reaffirmed that his wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and editorial skills should serve as a benchmark for upcoming journalists as the future of the industry rests on the indelible tenets of fairness, accuracy, and balance. He prayed that the Almighty God will grant the prolific writer longer life, good health, and more wisdom to save the nation and humanity. I, I said unlikely so because uh, I wasn't too sure that um, politicians like uh, to be told uh, the, the truth by people who are. Uh, who are considered to be uh, uh, rebels or activists and I got this from the president. I want to thank him immensely. Um, it means I don't know too much about Nigerian politicians that they can be different sometimes. So I, I'm truly grateful to the president for remembering a small man like me in the midst of all the serious issues that he has to contend with. So um, I, I hope that this message of gratitude will be conveyed to His Excellency the President. Later on, there was a presentation session where plaques were presented to exceptional journalists who have drawn indelible marks in the profession. In the vote of thanks by Mr. Antonin Bakwe, son-in-law of Mr. Ray Igbo, he appreciated all for gracing the occasion. He also spoke highly of the celebrant, his father-in-law, whom he described as a man who has achieved great success in his duty to the nation. He prayed God to grant all Johnny Mercy's back to their various destinations. The ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you very much. Family members, friends, the children of Mr. Ray Ekbu, led by Mrs. Edu Ray Mbakwe, Etikan, Mfoniso, Alex, thank you very much. Last but not least, 
to the one who has stayed by Mr. Ray Ebu's side through thick and thin, through all the detentions, through all the attacks, through all the persecutions. My mamito, Mrs. Oyai Ray Ebu. Thank you very much, mommy. As I close out, I say thank you again. And on behalf of Ray Ebu and his family, please accept our best wishes and prayers for Johnny Mercy's. Thank you very much. From Biscon Communications, we congratulate a donor of journalism, Mr. Ray Igbo, on her 70th birthday anniversary and his 45 glorious years of service in journalism. We wish him more milestone achievements.